thoughts that Director Morrison would like to make to any of those comments? Uh, well, <coughs> perhaps I could respond to the app if you want to make the, the access egress is, you know, it's an opinion expressed that it's very important. Um, certainly the drawings that we've been provided are more detailed than what we would typically receive. I mean, perhaps, perhaps uh, all the uh, the members haven't haven't looked at the drawings in detail, but particularly the three D model, it does show you know the exterior finishes that are to be used in the building. It shows the uh, the sizes of windows and doors and and how the facades are to be treated. Um, we have stipulated within the agreement what sort of materials are acceptable on the outside in addition to that. Um, the, the details of, of interior room layouts has never been something that we have looked at in detail other than to to have an understanding of how many units there will be and what size they will be, typically how many bedrooms they will be, so we have some idea of, of what the occupancy load is, because certainly an occupancy load would have an effect on, on planning issues. Uh, but the details of, of the interior layouts have not been something that we have, uh, have shown a, a lot of interest uh, even in the past, and I think the solicitor even commented last meeting, perhaps an issue that we don't even have authority over in, in the first place. Um, so, I, I, I could only say that that's something new, and I, 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 I'd like to understand what the concern would be if a bedroom was eight by nine and a half as opposed to eight and a half by 10 or something <coughs> of that nature. We have stipulated the maximum number of units, which of course is important. Um, and that's gone down from 71 to, uh, to 66. But I'm, I'm trying to understand what the, what the concern would be about the detailed room layouts. Okay. Would you like to? Mm -hmm. yes. um, I was, I'm thinking that if we had a detailed room layout, we would know exactly how many lofts there were, exactly how many um, small units there are, and how many successful units there are. And that just brings more clarity to, to the whole process. I guess what we know now is what the agreement says. 13 of the units would be one or two bedroom, with four of those being, or four of those being two bedroom. Uh, there would be barrier free units to, to meet the building code. And no, there's no guarantee on locked units. At this point, you'd be, you'd be voting for an agreement that potentially didn't have locks. And just before you go, I, I'd like one clarification. Uh, it was mentioned uh, by Councillor Simpson, a reference to uh, having the egress to the north and then to the Nova Scotia power lot. My reading of the agreement at this point doesn't allow for that. It, what it, it, it suggests is it would go north and then to Harborside. Is that not correct? It does, and, that, and that's because of the, um, the uncertainty about the Nova Scotia power law. Um, if, if the town negotiates or acquire, uh, negotiates a long-term lease or acquires that property within the next period of time, and I would suggest that that's probably at least six months out before that might happen, then maybe that would be an option that could be looked at, but it just doesn't seem to be practical to write that in at this point. Okay. Although it could come back in, in the future as an amendment. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we're all clear about that at the table. Okay, Councillor Simpson. Uh, 